and I'm a student at the missionary school. Originally, I come from Washington, Tri-Cities. Uh, today, I want to testify about healing and redemption in God's eyes. Um, when I was almost 12, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. And we fought that for a long time. And during that time, I didn't have parents to rely on because my mom was not in a state that I could actually come up to her and talk to her. She was too sick to, for me to be able to like have an like a intimate relationship with her. And my dad would always be taking care of my mom, so I didn't have a mom or a dad to go to during those times. And what ended up happening was I began to suppress all of my feelings and close them in, into myself. I didn't share anything with anyone. I didn't um, confide in anyone. I didn't, I wasn't able to like have people share my burdens or my pain. After a couple years of fighting, uh, my mom passed away. And after this, I began to fall into like phases of depression where um, like I just feel really unworthy and I would feel like it was all my fault. And that only got worse when people would often come up to us and the rest of my siblings and tell us it's because of your sin that your mom is, was sick. It was because of your sin that your mom passed away. And they'd constantly tell us all this stuff. And we would begin to feel the guilt upon ourselves. We'd begin to feel as if it was actually truly our faults. And, um, and it got worse as people would constantly tell us, like, you guys should have prayed more. You guys should have fasted more. You guys should have attended church more. And they would slowly and slowly, like, build these things up and speak them into our lives. And I began to take it in. I began to believe that I was unworthy. I began to believe that I was at fault, that I was guilty for all of this. And... Um, so my, and because of the fact that I never was able to confide in anybody, I never went to anybody like outside sources and nobody ever came to us to like talk to us and help us through this grief. And because of that, I ended up having, I ended up having to deal with this depression on my own. And I had like anxiety where I was constantly worried like, like, what if, what if something else happens to my family? Like, what if I come home or I get a phone call one day saying that something else happened? So I was in a state where I was constantly worried about my family, constantly worried that I was going to lose somebody else. Um, since I never had proper, like, counseling, I never had proper, um, like, somebody to confide in, an adult to confide in, I was never able to get healing. And it would, like... So every single, I'd be okay. I'd like my phase of depression would end, and I'd be okay for a few, um, like a few months, maybe a few, few weeks. But then something else would like trigger it, and I'd fall right back into it. So it was like a constant battle of depression, and I could not figure out what it was. And until I came to this missionary school and I ended up talking to a minister, it was I had realized that because I never talked to anybody about the pain I went through. I never got healing for that. I didn't realize that this is something I didn't have to carry. I thought that it was like almost like a curse placed upon me that I had to carry the, the pain. I had to that it was something that I had to. I it was it was my purpose to carry this. Like that was mine only to carry. And so I I did carry it. And I firmly believed that I couldn't give this to anybody. I firmly believed that like God had put this in my life, and I was supposed to I was supposed to live with this, and I could not do anything like that God wouldn't do, like God wouldn't take the pain away because he's the one that gave it in the first place. I believed that. But it was here in the missionary school that I was, I, like God revealed himself and I was able, and I was like, God told me that I, I can take that pain. Like I can give you that healing. Like that's not something you should be able to, like that's not something that I wanted you to carry. I wanted you to be able to give this to me. And that's where I realized that I don't have to keep pain to myself. Like, I didn't have to. I didn't have to because this was six years of a constant, like, I always, like, every single time I felt, like, down or any, any single time, like, something bad happened, I was never able to get over it fast because there was always that root of the fact that I never got healing for the death of my mom. And that root, root was never taken out until I came here. So for six years, it was a constant battle of like, what's wrong with me? Why am I unworthy? Why am I depressed sometimes? Why do I have anxiety sometimes? Why am I full of fear? And I never realized that it's something God could give me healing from. Um, I want to, so it was here at Bible school that like I asked God, I was like, God, like, I, I don't want to feel like this. I truly don't. Like, I want healing for this. I want this pain to be gone. And 
that's he started he started revealing to me that you don't need to like these situations that he places in our lives circumstances and things we had to go through they're not meant to like like crumble our foundations they're not they're not meant to drop us to like a pit they're actually meant to grow us to mold us to give us strength like that's what god intends through trials god intends to strengthen us it's not something that we should be like oh okay i guess since i um, have to go through this i'm just going to be bitter and i'm going to be full of pain that's not what god intended he wanted you to flourish in this he wanted you to be able to experience it so you can go on and help people and comfort people and counsel others that are going to go through the same things that you have already gone through and um and then i still like even after that healing i still struggled like i still felt like i was unworthy at certain times like i still felt like i was unworthy to be used as a vessel of god i felt like that and one of the coolest things is um we were praying one day and um god just put it on my heart to open up to zechariah so if you guys have your bibles oh, please open up to zechariah i'll be reading from uh chapter three Zechariah chapter 3. So it begins it begins saying that Joshua was standing before an angel of the Lord and he was standing and Satan was standing there too and Satan was standing there ready to accuse like he was ready to point out all the sins. He was ready to point out every single sin of Joshua. Like every single wrongdoing, he was ready to point that out. But instead, I'm going to read from verse 3. Uh, this is what happens instead. Now Joshua was standing before the angel, clothed with filthy garments, and the angel said to those who were standing before him, Remove the filthy garments from him. And he said to him, Behold, I have taken your iniquity away from you, and I will clothe you with pure vestments. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments. That right there, when like I read that, I just, something within me just completely broke. And I understood that this is literally what Christ did for me. Like Satan was ready there, like ready to accuse me of all these things like that people had like spoke negatively into my life as if, like that they made us feel guilty for everything that my family had to go through. And um, and said God was literally showing me this is a visual representation of what he did for me. He, I was standing there and Satan was there and God was there and Satan was like, this and this is her sin and this and this is what she did wrong and this and this and this and he would go on and God and God himself would just be like yes I am aware of her filthy garments yes I am aware of her filth I am aware of her sin but I'm going to clothe her in white I'm going to clothe her with clean I'm going to clothe her with myself with my pure clothing and that was like when I read this this was like the most amazing thing to me because it was truly how I felt and it's truly how God felt about me how he saw me he saw me because of, because of repentance, he saw me as not somebody who was unworthy. Instead, he saw me as someone who was worthy, someone who was made pure, someone who was made righteous and holy in his eyes through his blood. And so I want to leave you guys off with just saying that you don't, you don't have to carry things like that on your own. You don't have to carry pain or something that you felt like it was such a big part of you. Like, I felt like the death of my mom was a huge part of me, and I felt like that was my identity. That was... I made my identity in that but that's not who Christ like that's not what Christ wanted me to do with it instead he wanted me to go through it and um I just want to encourage you guys that you guys are not unworthy like through these situations he wants you to grow he wants you to be molded into the person he like he's meant for you to be that you have a purpose more than just to sit there and dwell upon your own iniquities and your own transitions that's not what he wants what he wants instead is for you to say I am a child of God I have made pure and righteous and holy in his eyes. So I leave with that. Amen.